Chairman His Highness Nayan bin Zayed Al Nayan, Excellencies, Honorable Ministers, Ladies and Gentlemen, dear colleagues, let me begin by thanking our hosts for, as always, welcoming us here in Abu Dhabi and also in the United Arab Emirates with extraordinary hospitality, generosity, and also a sense of history and the moment in which we are meeting here. Her Excellency and also the Honorable Minister of State have already alluded to that as the Iron Earth Summit gathers here in Abu Dhabi in the year 2015, we are not just a group of experts, scientists, environmental managers who are looking at the issue of data. What we're really doing is we are providing eyes, we are providing information and we are providing insights about something that over 40 years ago the crew of Apollo 17 first brought to our attention. You see this image here which has become so iconic, known at the time as the blue marble. It was the first time that we as human beings really looked at our own planet and began to comprehend both its uniqueness but increasingly also its fragility. Indeed, just a few months ago, NASA issued a new photo, um, an equivalent of the blue marble, but taken with the latest technology. And yet, if you looked at the photo in newspapers, it didn't look that different. It was just another angle of planet Earth. But what it did not show, what it has not revealed in the image, is something that many of you are very familiar with. In the year 2015, the state of this planet is significantly worse than it was <clears throat> over 40 years ago when Apollo 17 took that crew up into space and shared with us <clears throat> this iconic image. Whether it is our oceans, whether it is our forests, whether it is our wetlands, our atmosphere, our biosphere, arable land, wildlife, biodiversity, Notwithstanding many of the extraordinary efforts and also success stories that have been achieved over the last 50, 60 years, the balance sheet of this planet Earth in the year 2015 is still pointing in so many respects and on all vital indicators in the wrong direction. Some of that should not surprise us. We have a good half century behind us in which Billions of additional people were added to the global population. Many hundreds of millions have been lifted out of poverty, industrialization and infrastructure. And nowhere is that progress into the 21st century more visible, more feelable, more real than here in the United Arab Emirates. But it is this extraordinary progress that has also left us feeling increasingly uncomfortable and as the late Sheikh Zayed already spoke to so often in his life, a more deeper sense of discomfort that our responsibility for nature is one that is being lost in the fascination of progress expressed in infrastructure, technology, and many of the comforts of the modern world. What at that time was an image that was one look at Earth <clears throat> is today because of what is available to us through big data, through satellite technology, through um, also the capacity of processors and computers to simply generate data in a totally different quantity, but also quality of analysis, entirely different. We now have millions of ways of looking at this planet, and almost with every month that passes, more opportunity to understand what is in fact happening to the planet. This comes against, as I alluded to at the beginning, a background that we should not underestimate. Just a few days ago in New York, virtually all of the world's leaders adopted a 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. It is a remarkable document, and I was talking to my dear colleague, the Honorable Minister, Dr. Rashid, just now, about how this journey of close to 40 years if you go back to the early days of when environmental sustainability alongside social progress and economic progress 
was beginning to be defined in this notion of sustainable development. It took us the better part of three decades to be able to arrive at a point where environment is not viewed as an add-on, where the foundations of life on this planet Earth are beginning to be understood as exactly what they are, the foundations upon which economic and social progress can occur. Our ignorance, our lack of knowledge, sometimes our greed, has often led us to neglect this, to argue that first we develop, then we worry about the environment. Well, as we all know, with climate change now becoming a reality, we have learned that we can only pollute the atmosphere up to a point with seven billion people, and then nature has its way of coming back at us. What we are now facing in the coming decades is an extraordinary reinvention of our entire economic infrastructure because of just 100 years of pollution that we did not understand would have such consequence. These 100 years in some ways are a nanosecond in the history of this planet, and yet we have actually managed in that very brief moment to begin to affect the atmosphere, as we had done with the ozone layer. Our ability to comprehend that this new sustainable development agenda is not just a set of 17 sustainable development goals, important as they are in their own right. They represent a commitment for the first time by all nations on this planet to work in the same direction. These are universal goals. This is no longer sustainable development aimed only at developing economies and societies. No, it is also speaks to the wealthier, more industrialized, and developed nations on this planet. And they are integrated throughout these sustainable development goals, almost like the DNA of human beings runs now the social, the economic, and the environmental dimension. It is for this reason alone that this Iron Earth Summit here in 2015 in Abu Dhabi comes at a very critical moment because right now the world is now looking to you, some of the world's leading experts and practitioners, at the interface between science, data and policy, but also with respect to practitioners who have developed responses and solutions from the ground up, who in order to be able to turn them into policy and into a change approach to development need big data. We live in an age that is often now described as the age of big data, and I think through the eyes of Agedi, we have begun to bring a universe of environmental knowledge and expertise into a very close, knit relationship with that emerging potential of using data. The world we want is how we describe this in the United Nations, and in UNEP, we have developed in the past three years UNEP Live, our attempt to try and create an open data network that echoes the objectives of the Iron Earth Summit and that is inextricably linked in a partnership with Agedi also. We have walked together quite a distance, but the summit that we are having with you here this year in 2015 must also set new ambitions and directions. The world is impatient. The world is also increasingly frustrated because we cannot only describe problems in the abstract and then expect societies and economies, be they ministers of finance or industry or energy, to somehow come up with the answers. Data management is becoming crucial to be able to develop systemic solutions and approaches because we live and operate in ecosystems, but also in economic systems and social systems. Our ability to also take advantage of data in being able to take global approaches. Many of the environmental change phenomena of the 21st century are local in their impact, but global in their nature and often global in their solutions also. Whether it is climate change, loss of biodiversity, what is happening in our oceans, the link also to food security, to energy security, and again, I want to pay tribute, particularly also to the United Arab Emirates and Abu Dhabi, 
and having become one of the pioneers in promoting renewable energy, not only in hosting IRENA, having Mazda here, but also in investing in developing economies in making this technology accessible. We cannot talk about a world of soon 10 billion people without answering the question of how will we be able to make a transition to a low carbon energy economy without new technologies being, able, being made available, not least to a continent such as the one which hosts the United Nations Environment Programme's headquarters, Africa. As many of you know, we have been established for over 40 years in Nairobi, Kenya, and this is a continent that now has one billion people, by 2050 probably two billion people, and yet in this year, 2015, 700 million of Africa's citizens do not even have access to electricity. Talking about environmental sustainability without addressing this dimension of economic progress and also the equity and justice dimension would be a recipe for disaster. Big data, whether it is the OneWeb trying to complete global connectivity, whether it is Wikipedia Zero in partnering with phone providers to provide access with no data charges and text only, whether it is Facebook Zero, which has helped to connect Africa with a text-only version on the site, or whether it is also sometimes bringing different universes together. The Zayed Future Energy Prize a few months ago rewarded and awarded the prize to Mkopa, a new scheme in which a cell phone network in Kenya joined forces with a solar energy provider, creating a new market and system for pay-as-you-go purchasing of solar electricity in off-grid, decentralized rural villages. It is these kinds of schemes that connect the world of data with practical solutions that will guide us into the future. UNEP continues to work on this frontier because we ourselves feel challenged, but we do so with great pride also in the alliance that has been part of the Abu Dhabi Global Environmental Data Initiative. I want to pay tribute to this alliance, to the core partners, to the initiatives that have also been launched and implemented over the past few years, and I want to pay tribute also to Her Excellency Razan Khalifa al-Mubarak. Her vision, her leadership, her persistence, and that of her team have brought us together. I hope that as we leave Abu Dhabi this year and this Iron Earth Summit, we may be also inspired by somebody who will speak to you over the coming few days. May Jameson, who was lucky enough to see that view from that vantage point some years ago, had a great saying, the best way to make dreams come true is to wake up. I think our task as a community of professionals hosted here today in Abu Dhabi and by the United Arab Emirates, which is positioning itself as a new global hub and center for technology, for science, for the world of finance, for the way the world will have to work in the years to come. Our task is indeed one of convening, converging, and collaborating. Because without leadership, particularly from those able to draw on the resources available to them today, we will not be able to find answers to hopefully make that photograph in another 40 years' time tell a story of truly having turned around a pathway towards sustainable development. Thank you very much.